Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. Let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, and then I wanna move on here uh, to what giants do I think need to play well, you know, going after these OTAs, after this mini camp, you know, in the training camp, in the preseason, um, what giants need to play well for this whole thing to work out? The first guy, I mean, I'm not going to include Daniel Jones. That's that's like almost obvious. It's very obvious. The first guy that I can think of is Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas is going to be the blind side protector. He made strides last year. He looked good. But is that going to translate to him taking that next step forward and being that all pro left tackle? Because he has that potential 100% to be an all pro left tackle. And he doesn't have to be an all pro. He just has to be a very good left tackle. Be a left tackle that's not a turnstile. Be, you know, not even, you know, I want him to be a good left tackle. He doesn't have to be the best in the league. If he can be a guy who, for the most part, keeps, you know, Daniel Jones' blind side clean, that's a win for us. It was 100% worth the pick. He cannot take a step back this year. We cannot afford it with everything that we've put into the offense this year and Daniel Jones in this part of his career and, you know, Dave Gettleman at where he is right now. He cannot afford to take that step back. Andrew Thomas is going to, I mean, coming out of the draft, Imagine your first game you play against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're playing against Bud Dupree and TJ Watt week one. Then you're playing against uh, Khalil Mack. And then you're playing against Chase Young, who we did really well against. But you're playing against all of these all-pro pass rushers. And, you know, you're like, what, two or three games into the NFL. You played against Leonard Floyd. You played against the best of the best. So what would you expect? If you are, you know, a lawyer and the first the first person you go against is like this all world Hall of Fame lawyer. So Andrew Thomas, he took his lumps. He got better. He dealt with some injuries and I expect him to get better. But if he's not better this year, he's I mean, because the second half was great. The second half of last season was great. But if he plays like he did the first half, then that is that's a turnstile kind of tackle. But I think he will take that step forward. He will protect the blind side. And listen, if there are problems on that right side, at least Daniel Jones will be able to see them. Problems on that left side would be a disaster because that's your blind side. And then your quarterback is getting hit while he's trying to throw the ball. And then you have the media come and start talking about, you know, he can't hold on to the football when he's getting hit from his blind side while he's trying to throw the ball. So Andrew Thomas is a must. He's a must. He's a must play well kind of player. Moving on to Lorenzo Carter. I think he's a guy that, that really has to step up this year because Aziz Ojolari, I'm expecting some from him, uh, but you can't expect a p pass rushers usually take a while to develop. You got your Chase Youngs, who are monsters. You got your Nick Boses, who are monsters. Year one, I mean, just ridiculously great year one. But pass rushers usually take a little bit of time to develop. Even the greatest ones. I mean, Michael Strahan wasn't good his first couple of years, and he had a Hall of Fame career. But Aziz Ojolari, I'm seeing his ceiling this year at about, you know, 10 or 11 sacks, which might get him defensive player of the year or defensive rookie of the year. But realistically, he'll probably be around seven sacks or less. And that's fine. So we need someone else who's a veteran at this point, Lorenzo Carter, to step up and be that, you know, be that outside pass rusher for us because Aziz Ojolari is we're looking at it right now, he seems like he's our best outside pass rusher. That's not going to be acceptable, I mean, until he proves himself. So Lorenzo Carter has got to be that force on the outside to take that pressure off of Leonard Williams because you know teams are just going to double up, triple up on Leonard Williams, leave those guys on the outside one-on-one, -on -one, and if we're not able to win those battles, we're going to have another time where the quarterbacks are sitting back there, patting the ball, reading books, knitting, you know, going fishing, whatever they want to do back there. And no matter how great your secondary is, you got to be able to get home. So please, Lorenzo Carter, I need you to step up this year. We got two Georgia Bulldogs on this list so far. We got a lot of Georgia Bulldogs on our team, including Tate Crowder and Aziz Ojolari, of course. 
But uh, so far, the two Bulldogs, Andrew Thomas and Lorenzo Carter, I need to step up. Finally, someone I need to play well. And I need him to play well for all of this to go together. Adoree Jackson. We signed Adoree Jackson and it was almost, it lost its thunder because it was on the tail end of, you know, Kenny Galladay getting signed. So Kenny Galladay was the big receiver that we wanted to sign. We wanted to trade for him last year. I have videos of us like, can we trade for Kenny Galladay right now? I kind of wish we would have done it, but we were, we were able to get him, um, you know, without having to give up picks. So we got Galladay. And then, you know, the day after or two days after, we signed Adoree Jackson. And Adoree Jackson is someone who really has the ceiling to be our number one corner of the future. If, you know, Bradbury walks, he can be that number one corner of the future. He has all the physical tools. He's just always injured. Uh, and he has some issues with tackling. But Adoree Jackson is going to be very vital for what the Giants want to do this year. They want to play press man. Adoree Jackson can do that if he's healthy. He has the speed. He has the size. He has the coverage ability 100%. Uh, he's, he's very vital for what the Giants want to do this year. So if we can get him to be that press man guy who can be a lockdown corner or even, you know, a, a below lockdown corner, but just a very good corner, we're going to create a lot of takeaways. Because James Bradbury on one side, I see him as a lockdown corner unless he takes a step back, which is possible, but I don't see him taking a huge step back. So I see James Bradbury pretty much having one side locked down, which means they're going to probably be going to the other side. They're probably going to move that number one receiver over there. They're going to try to do things to get the ball to the other side of the field. Now, teams are just going to go out and say, we're going to test the Dory Jackson because he's not proven in this system. So they're going to throw it at him early and often. If he can make them pay, that's going to change how teams play us. That's going to make teams try to run the ball more. And I'm confident about us being able to stop the run. It's going to make teams, you know, try to attack the slot. It's just going to, if teams know that they cannot throw the ball to the boundaries, you know, unless they have all world elite wide receivers that they feel like are just the best of the best, that is really going to set the tone for the season. It's going to help out the pass rush, as I've already said. It's going to help out the entire defense. If you have two go two guys that can cover on the outside, even if your slot guy is a sieve, which I don't see because we have a ton of competition in that slot right now, including some of the safeties that can play in the slot, and then the safeties behind them, I just really think Adoree Jackson playing well makes this defense uh, a a a really, really good defense. I mean, a defense that, that's a top seven defense to a defense that can be, you know, top three. That That's how important Adoree Jackson is to making this defense go. So I expect him to come out and play well from the beginning. Uh, you know, he might have a couple of bruises and bump, but I expect him to come out and he's going to be tested and he does not give up those deep passes. So I expect him to get some interceptions early make some plays early, you know, deflect some passes. And it's just going to change how people decide to attack the Giants defense. Because if it gets to the point where they say, you just got to pick your poison with the with Dory Jackson and James Bradbury, then there's going to be a lot of turnovers because they're not going to really be able to focus on one side. Uh, I see them throwing a lot into the slot. And, you know, if teams are only throwing into the slot, that makes things a lot easier to game plan for. So with Dory Jackson, we need a big season from you. If you can do that, I mean, the Giants are a guaranteed top three defense. If you made it this deep into the video, come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.